Due to the importance that social housing has on the lives of working people, it has become an issue of significance for politicians. Every election cycle we see politicians talk about regenerative housing projects in poorer areas, but the first politician to do this envisioned the North East as a cultural hub for the region, with modern social housing helping to transform Newcastle into what he called the Brasilia of the North. Whilst his legacy in this city is split between charismatic visionary and arrogant villain, there is no debating that social housing in the North East was greatly influenced by the man that was, T. Dan Smith. Thomas Daniel Smith was the son of a communist miner and cleaner in Walls End, born in 1915. He described the dire conditions of his childhood, where disease and death were commonplace. After working as a painter and decorator for most of his youth, Smith soon followed in the footsteps of his father into the world of radical communist politics. This political action resulted in Smith joining the Labour Party in 1945, where he was forced onto a council housing committee against his will. However, after Smith saw the terrible conditions that people were forced into living in, it became his personal crusade to get better housing for the most vulnerable people in his city. As leader of the town council, Smith focused much of his affairs on housing. He made sure Newcastle was the first city in the country to have its own planning department and spearheaded the campaign to demolish unpopular slum-like housing in the Biker, Ellswick and Scotswood regions of the city. Smith had seen firsthand the awful situation in these communities, highlighting issues regarding overcrowding, broken sewers leading to rat infestations, high crime and illness rates, as well as no children passing into higher education. Ever the ambitious leader, Smith approached world-renowned architects to design these council-funded projects. This resulted in planning projects such as Smith's collaboration with Sir Wilf Burns in the plan for the centre of Newcastle, as well as the start of construction for Crudders Park Towers and Ralph Erskine's Biker Wall, often labelled the greatest public house in the state of all. However, Smith was unable to oversee the construction of his modernist utopia, as he was promoted to a high position by the Labour Party. This led to what he labelled as poor construction and a lack of funding from the Conservative government, resulting in the displacement of many Newcastle residents outside of the city to places such as Killingworth and Washington. Smith's move away from Newcastle politics would ultimately lead to his downfall in the Poulson affair. After three trials, Smith pleaded guilty to corruption charges and served nine years in prison. While Smith maintained his innocence his whole life, claiming he was a fall guy and only pled guilty as he was the targeted by powers that be, the scandal had tarnished his reputation. The legacy of T. Dan Smith and his ambitious vision for the North East has become somewhat disputed since his death in 1993. Some mourn the loss of the Victorian houses in the Biker and Scotswood regions and the communities that died with them, whilst also reviling the ugly, brutalist blocks which loom over the city. Supporters of Smith's legacy highlight not only the progress he made regarding housing, but also his other triumphs of developing Newcastle Airport, Eldon Square Shopping Centre, the Civic Centre, Northumbria University, the independence of Newcastle Universities from Durham, the Northern Stage Theatre and countless other projects in the city. However, the one certainty of Smith's legacy is that he changed social housing in the North East region forever. <laughs>